Alright, if you're watching this and you bought a headphone amplifier kit and you're wondering how to put it together, um, each kit's going to come with the following components. You got your, your bag of parts here, you got your circuit board, and then you're going to have uh, your audio jacks and your volume control, and there's a switch built into this potentiometer so that turns it on as well. And then there's also going to be some solder. Um, first things first, you want to make sure you've got all your parts. So just a quick rundown. Um, you're basically going to have an op amp, an op amp socket, then you're going to have two one kilo ohm resistors, and I've I've made it a little easy. I've marked them all on the all the resistors are marked on the little paper tab, with the exception of the 10 kilo ohm one. So the the three loose ones are going to be your 10 kilo ohm. So you got the 1 kilo ohm, your 10 kilo ohm. You're going to have your output resistor choices are going to be 20, 30, and 75 ohms. And so those are there. Then we have the 4.7K. You're going to have your two signal capacitors, which are these little red guys. They're 0.1 microfarad. And then you got your power capacitors, which are these 220 microfarad. And then we got the volume control. Your power indicator LED and two jacks for the audio as well as the battery connector. Um, as far as tools go, what I recommend having for this are I like to have a little pair of needle nose pliers, I like to have small diagonal cutters, and then I also think it's nice to, well you also need a soldering iron, but I think it's nice to have a small computer fan or something to blow the fumes away from you while you're soldering. Uh, so I'm going to flip on the soldering iron. Um, also, each kit comes with this, this sheet here, which includes all the part names as they're going to be on the circuit board and the values. So if, if you don't need these instructions, you can just pull this up, which that's listed on the link there, or you can go to the link and find these videos. So the first thing I like to do is I like to solder the audio jacks, I think they're easiest to get flat when there's nothing else on the board. And actually even before that you can see the board has these little edges and I like to, like right there, I like to clip them off with the diagonal cutters. And if you want to you can even take a little file or some sandpaper and smooth those off. So first I like to snap these in. You want to be careful because if these pins get bent and you try to snap them in, you can bend them more. So you want to make sure they line up before you pop them in. Looks like those fit pretty well. So then I like to just hold the board kind of upside down like that and tack in one. And that way they're nice and flat. For this portion I'm going to get a little closer to the board here. So I got one on that one, and one on that one tacked in. And then you can just go ahead and fill in the rest of them. So let's go ahead and do that. I like to go through and just kind of reheat them all just to make sure it's not a cold joint. So you can see now both of those are on there. Now the next thing I like to do is put in the op amp socket. And for this you want to make sure on the board there it's got the indentation on the right side. And you want to make sure that your socket which has a similar indentation lines up with that and that way when you put your socket in later you get it the correct orientation. So for this I actually like to take it over to the edge of the table and you can see here I just kind of hang it over so that part is the only part supporting it so it's nice and flat and then I just go ahead and tack one of those in. So 
about to solder my cable there. But now that that's in, I can do the rest out here. I like to go through and and this socket kind of does two things for you. It makes it so one, if you have a cheaper soldering iron, you don't discharge static on your on your op amp or overheat it. And the other thing that's nice is with this you can actually swap out different op amps if you want, you know, ones with different sound characteristics. So the next thing I usually do is I start putting in all of the resistors, and the reason I do that is because a couple of them are a little bit tough to get to if you've already put the capacitors in. So I think what I'm going to do is get out my list of uh, resistor values here. And it looks like R1 and 2 are 1 kilo ohm, so I'm going to find the 1 kilo ohm. And you can see they're marked 1K. So. on the board here, R2 is here, and R1 is right here. And what I like to do to kind of make them fit better is I like to take these small needle nose pliers and I like to start bending it right here, just a light start on both sides. And then I finish it with my fingers. That way I get a nice, decent bend in there before I put it in. So this one, I'm going to put in the R2 spot. So you can see I got that pushed in there, and the leads are coming out the back. I usually like to bend them out a little bit, and it just kind of holds it in place until I solder it. I'm going to go ahead and put R1 and 2 so I can solder them both at the same time. First, I'm going to bend it the same way I did the other. And you want to make sure you don't actually bend it. The reason you use the pliers is so you don't actually bend part of the resistor and break some off. So you want to make sure you get that bend away from it some. So then I'm going to solder those. see those are in now but we need to trim our leads so just take my small diagonal cutters and these got to be kind of careful because they will go flying so you want to make sure you kind of hold the end
Okay, and now let's put in the 10K resistors, and there's three of those. And those are the loose ones that don't have a marking. So you're going to bend those the same way to the others. And these are going to be R3, R4, and R10. So we can go ahead and put those in the board. And then we can solder those just like the other ones. And then clip the leads off like before. And sometimes I like to just retouch those after I clip the leads.